So this is Lust in Space, and we start with these two people. They're in a space shuttle on the way to a space station. This is Susan, and she's very excited about finally boarding the space station. Oh, Marty, I can't believe it. I finally get to board the space station. And this is Marty. He tells Susan he knows she'd rather be up in space with someone called Pete, because everyone in the space program knows she has the hots for him. And Susan is horrified. Oh no, is it that obvious? Pretty much, yeah. So they're about to dock at the space station when... Oh no, what's that? Yeah, well I can tell you exactly what that sound is. It's the standard iPhone alarm tone. <laughs> it is. <laughs> While to us it's clearly an iPhone alarm, to them it's a radiation alarm to indicate there's a cosmic radiation storm. Oh, I see. Susan tells Marty not to worry. He can just fire the retro rocket and she'll navigate around the storm. Oh, right, right, good idea. But Marty has pressed the wrong button. Oh, crap. Mission Control informs them that there's nothing they can do and that they're going to die up there. Well then, then there's only one thing left we can do. And then they bang. After they finish, they see Director Johnson in a spacesuit out the window. I do not believe I have ever seen a worse performance in a flight simulation. Hey. Excuse me? So that whole thing was a simulation. What? <laughs> yes, I also have many questions, but we're going to need to ignore them. At the debrief, Marty explains that he just got caught up in the moment, but Johnson, against the advice of Deputy Director Stevens, kicks Marty off the team and replaces him with the backup commander, Pete. It is my call, and I have made my decision. After the meeting, Deputy Director Stevens makes a call to Nikolai, who's on the space station. They're both worried because they're involved in some sort of illegal side mission, and the final component Nikolai needs had been planted in Marty's things. Now they're going to have to plant it in Pete's instead. The only other people on the station, Brad and Sam, overhear Nikolai talking to Mission Control, but he gives them no reason whatsoever to be suspicious. Was that Mission Control? What? No. I mean, yes. I mean, it was just some routine business. Maybe he's trying to hide something. So Brad and Sam bang. Back on Earth, there's a celebration party for Pete, and for some reason, Marty has decided to show up to it. This is Sasha. She comes out of nowhere and throws herself at Pete. Pete even gets all the good-looking girls. So they go back to Pete's apartment and bang. Ooh, what's this? Sasha is working for Deputy Director Stevens. Now that contact has been made, Stevens gives Sasha the component to plant in Pete's stuff. Back at Mission Control, or whatever it is, Director Johnson explains how important this mission is and that they have two weeks until blast-off. Then there's this training montage. It's the night before takeoff, and Pete is back at home with Sasha, who convinces him to take this photo of her with him. Yes. We are each allotted a certain amount of weight to carry personal items with us. Okay, I know it's soft porn, but make some effort, please. That is just appalling. Sasha then confirms with Deputy Director Stevens that the component will be in Pete's personal items. Stevens then calls Nikolai to confirm that the component will be in a photo frame in Pete's stuff. Sam overhears Nikolai on the phone again. This time he tells her he was telling Mission Control that he has to leave on the next shuttle because he's in love with her and he finds it too difficult to be around her all the time. So they bang. The night before the shuttle leaves, Susan goes into this bar to meet Marty. Since I washed out of the space program, the Air Force moved me over to intelligence work. He just wanted to meet Susan to say good luck on the flight tomorrow. But while they're there, they see Sasha. Marty says there's something familiar about her. The next day, Susan and Pete are in the shuttle and waiting for liftoff. Sasha is at Pete's apartment and Deputy Director Stevens turns up with her payment. They watch the shuttle launch, then they bang. Marty, who is still at the bar, is going over some papers. Oh, so that's how he recognised her. She's wanted for international espionage. Up in space, the shuttle is about to dock at the space station. Well done, Susan. Oh, thanks, Pete. Over at Pete's house, Marty has come over to arrest Sasha. She has promised to tell him everything after they bang. Really? Let's start the negotiating. After they finish, Susan and Pete are welcomed onto the station by Sam, Brad and Nikolai, who offers to take their bags, and he's found the component in the photo frame. It's a USB stick. Back at Pete, Sasha explains the whole plan to Marty. Apparently, when Nikolai installs the USB stick, it will turn the space station into a giant space laser. Giant space laser? 
You actually expect me to believe that? I guess. And they can use this to blackmail the richest countries on Earth. Marty gets to mission control, uses the radio to call the space station and tells them what's happened. They're told to restrain Nikolai immediately, but they can't because he's outside finishing the laser. So Sam turns the power off and Nikolai is stuck outside. What have you done? What has happened to the power? Back at mission control, Marty asks Sasha who she was working for. She confirms it was Deputy Director Stevens. <laughs> So that's it now. Stevens has been arrested. Nikolai is stuck outside the space station. So what now? Oh yes, of course. Back on Earth, Marty explains that Deputy Director Stevens, Sasha and Nikolai are all in federal custody. Director Johnson has decided to send Susan and Pete to the space station permanently. And they're pretty chuffed about that. Oh, I love you, baby. I love you too, Susan. And that's where it ends. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.